Ted Fenton had left and the club was about to embark on a new and exciting era with Ron Greenwood as the manager. He'd been assistant manager at Arsenal and he was a great admirer of the Hungarian style of play. I had ideas of how a club should be run. I was very continental minded because of my Hungarian background and I was very conscious of that. And so I set up the club uh, in the sense of more or less like a continental side, wanted to play that type of football. I had the players. There was a lot of movement. Older players had to go, new players had to come in. But there was a nucleus of young players there, Martin Peters, Jeff Hurst, Bobby Moore, Ronnie Boyce. So that was something to work on. Ron saw West Ham win the FA Youth Cup in brilliant fashion against Liverpool, and then he took his senior players to a club tournament in America that helped them get to know each other and laid the foundations for the new style of West Ham football. We came back the following year and won the FA Cup in, in 64. The following year in 65 we won the European Cup, beat uh, 1860 Munich at Wembley. And the, the whole thing was bubbling and everything was nice and uh, it really was. And uh, it, The supporters were, were tremendous because they'd never seen anything like this before. And, and of course we had players like Moore, Hurst and Peters, Ronnie Boyce, mm. uh, Jackie Burkett, uh, Joe Kirkup. And Jim Stannon, who, who I'd signed as a goalkeeper, Kenny Brown, jo uh, John Bond, and uh, the, the whole thing about it, Johnny Sissons and Nelly Redknapp came from the youth side and played in the first team. The thing was bubbling and what have you. And this went on for quite a while and we were always entertaining. On the pitch, West Ham in 1964 got that Wembley feeling. This after a momentous FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United at Hillsborough. Boyce scores the Hammers' first goal. John Sissons places the kick well. Jack Burkett passes to Boyce, and it's goal two for the Hammers. Inside left, Jeff Hurst clinches matters with West Ham's third goal. West Ham are jubilant. They'll meet Preston in the final. And after nine minutes, Doug Holden puts the ball in the net. And it's the equaliser. Wilson takes the kick, centre forward, Ali Gorson heads the goal. <laughs> Ray Brooks' kick is just what the Hammers ordered. Centre half, Ken Brown is there, not quite on target. Jeff Hurst does better, and yes sir, Alan Kelly just fails to keep the ball out. That all happened so quickly, let's see just how West Ham scored the equaliser. Obviously time for West Ham to go into a huddle. And almost in the last seconds of the game, West Ham inside right Ronnie Boyce heads into the net. This is just how it happened. West Ham's third goal, which won them the cup. Johnny Byrne starts a one-man training session. Bobby Moore, captain of West Ham, captain of England, and at this moment, happy as any man alive, leads his men to receive the trophy and winner's medal. Lord Harwood represents the Queen. A lap of honour now by the 11 excited men who have won the most highly prized sporting trophy in the world. The general verdict, the best final for many a year. Mind you, Ron Greenwood was soon back at the basics with the club's young players. And I wonder if you recognise the future star standing second from the right, a young Trevor Brooking. Ron Greenwood looking to the future, but within a year he'd taken West Ham back to Wembley for the final of the European Cup Winners' Cup against 1860 Munich of West Germany. Cecily, this time it really was a goal.
Bobby Moore placed the kick well. And Zeely scored again. What a night for West Ham as Bobby Moore received the trophy from the president of the European Union of Football Association. The whole country is proud of the Hammers, winners of the European Cup Winners' Cup. The final was, was perfection, really. And I, all I said to somebody as I was walking off, I said, well, at long last, we've showed the rest of Europe that we can play like them, and that was my proudest moment. Billy Bonds and Trevor Brooking had begun to fashion so much of West Ham's thinking on the field. First, Billy Bonds. And Redknapp very nearly nipped in for what could have been a second and killer goal. Bonds now. Letting one go. And again, they looked and waited, and Robson was there very quickly. A nice little chip towards Billy Bonds, and he scored a second one. 2 0 Billy Bonds. And Crystal Palace defence was in ruins. Taylor doggedly is trying to stay with Billy Bonds. Bonds a little cross and Clyde Best to go. Number three, Clyde Best. He was tremendous. He came as a young, he came as a right back, of course, and uh, he grew in stature all the time. He was at West Ham. He was a tremendous athlete, great, great, set great standards on fitness, and, and uh, he was a leader as well. But it was interesting, really, how that uh, how the situation arose that he became captain because Frank Lampard really should have been captain. And but Frank had, when Bobby had gone to Fulham. Uh, you know, we'd sold Bobby to Fulham. Frank made a statement about the fact that he, he felt that he'd like to leave the club as well. And uh, so consequently, after Bobby had gone, I felt that, well, you can't make somebody who wants to leave the club as well captain. So I made Billy captain. That's how Billy became captain, really, in, in a default of Frank Lampard. And so the young West Ham fullback taking it up now. Is Skipper outside him? Bobby Moore. Cross first time there towards Hurst at the far side, but again McFarlane's head was there. Brooking, still Brooking. Yes, Trevor Brooking. No mistake about that one. So little space there. And an abject pulling Bolton. Brooking, who looked to have no space at all, threading his way past three, turned himself clear, and then hammered in one that made no mistake. He was a tremendous player, and, 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 and such an assuming uh, type of lad really uh, never really never really lauded it about his skill he was shy and retiring almost to a degree of you know the lads used to take the mick out of him you know but uh, he was he could take he could take all that and he and he laughed you know ha 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 you know his usual stuff and then of course I, he came I, he, he was in the England side and and when he was in the England side with me, of course, they got uh, West Ham got uh, relegated, and Trevor was very concerned about his position in the England side. I said, "Well, it doesn't matter what team you're playing in, first division, third division, yeah. you're still an England player," and that that kind of helped him to stay at West Ham, I think. Well, Ron Greenwood, I think, was the person who really introduced the the West Ham philosophy of the, the football that they played, and I think a lot of supporters of other clubs. Um, one of their second or third clubs is often West Ham because of the style of football they play. It's entertaining and attacking. And, and Ron, whole coaching beliefs really centred in training around working with the ball, uh, being comfortable in possession, um, getting good habits, passing, control, and really attacking. And, and that, I think, probably as much as anything is why... I enjoyed, I think, from staying at the club 19 years, people will often say, well, why did you stay at the club that long? Didn't you want to move on? But when it becomes your profession, you, you then still very fortunate if you look forward to the matches and still enjoy them. Whereas, you know, when you're playing just for fun, sometimes you can have an easy weekend or whatever. But at West Ham, the style of football we played, uh, particularly my own role as an attacking midfield player, uh, meant I always was looking forward to the matches. And, and that really was down to Ron as such. Good to see uh, Brian Robson back again. 
Well, uh, Brian came back through circumstances, and this is what football's all about. Circumstances dictate sometimes when people come back into the side. Unfortunately, Johnny McDowell got injured on Wednesday, so Brian had to come back in, and he really gave us some vintage Robson uh, action, and, and, uh, and I'm sure if we look here, Graham Padden knocks the ball off to Trevor Booking, gets the return ball back from uh, Trevor, knocks the ball into space, and who's there running and attacking ball at Brian, and Glazer makes a great reaction on the left-handed save, Brian, you see, isn't a player that's jumping high to get the ball. He's always attacking the ball, glancing. Here again from Coleman near the end of the game. And he attacks it again just on the edge of the box and glances it wide of that post. He's, he's a player that's running in anticipation, great sense of anticipation, and attacking the ball and glancing it with great power. And this really is uh, uh, a skill that Brian Robson is streets ahead of anybody else in football. Mm. Place. Reflecting West Ham's recent run, good to see it. Manager Ron Greenwood, named as Bell's Manager of the Month with something really to sell celebrate as well. Uh, that's followed by one of the most emotional moments of the day when Bobby Moore, now of Fulham, came to say goodbye some 15 and a half years since making his first appearance for West Ham. And Ron Greenwood, unknown to the West Ham board, was about to make another surprise announcement. I felt that it was time for a change and, and I was wanting to run the club, as I said earlier, on the continental line. So I thought to myself, well, what I'll do, I'll make myself general manager. And by then, young John Lyle, uh, uh, I'd brought him up uh, with, through the youth team. I'd made him assistant manager, got him interested in coaching and everything, because he had to pack up, as you know, when he was about mm -hmm. 25. And so he, he, he was a great pupil, and everything went well. And so I said, well, look, I mean, I always remember the situation. I said to him, I'm going to make you the team manager. And I told the team what I was doing. And what I'd never done was tell the board I was going to do it because it was a unique experience. You see, I had an understanding at West Ham with Mr. Pratt, who was a chairman, which was based on faith. I didn't have a contract. I was there 17 years, never had a contract. But it was based on faith with one man, Mr. Pratt. So everything that I did was for the, he knew I was doing it for the good of the club. And when I explained to him, it was the only board meeting I went in with a little fear. I explained what I'd done. They said, oh dear. <laughs> but I was, I was expecting I might get the boot because of whatever, because I'd never, I'd never even told one of them, you know. And so consequently, they said, well, if that's how you believe and that's the thing, the way it should go, let's do it. And so we did. Ron Greenwood moved on to the England job. He handed over to John Lyle, here receiving one of his regular Bell's Manager of the Month awards. And Ron recalls those days with so much football talk between them. We used to sit in the car park after games talking about three or four o'clock in the morning, never went home, you know. It was all to do. He was so thirsty for knowledge and wanted to know everything. And he was a great pupil and, of course, has, has turned out to be a master himself. Yeah. Um, I mean, how highly do you rate him as a manager? One of the best managers in the game, yes. As high as that? Yes. Yeah. Ron Greenwood's death on Thursday the 9th of February at the age of 84 was a shock to all West Ham fans. This was a man who first arrived at the club in April 1961 to replace manager Ted Fenton and save the club from relegation. From that moment on, he built a side soon to feature Jeff Hurst, Martin Peters and West Ham's finest son, Bobby Moore. Under Ron Greenwood, Hammers won the FA Cup in 1964 and the European Cup Winners' Cup at Wembley the following year, playing an attacking style of football rarely seen in Britain before his arrival. He went into joint managership with the young John Lyle in 1974, winning the FA Cup again in 1975. He handed the reins to Lyle in August 1977 to manage England for five years, culminating in his taking them to a place at the 1982 World Cup tournament.